Namaskar. A warm welcome to World News and Indian Perspective on All India Radio. This is Manoj Singh Rana and with me is Gaurav Sharma bringing glimpses of major developments of the day from across the globe. Over the next half an hour, we shall bring you the latest from the world of politics, economy, sports, entertainment and more. As the world fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with a message of caution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene. The headlines. Tenth round of commander level talks between India and China concludes. Both sides agree to stabilize the situation and push for early resolution. Government of India asks states would spike in daily new COVID-19 cases to increase testing, surveillance of cases and containment in select districts. Facebook takes down Myanmar military's main page for breach of standards of incitement to violence. Nuclear watchdog IAEA chief arrives in Tehran as Iran studies proposal for informal meet with USA on the 2015 JCPOA deal. And in tennis, defeating, defending champion Novak Djokovic wins his ninth Australian Open title, beating Daniel Medvedev at Melbourne Park. The 10th round of the India-China Corps Commander Level meeting was held on the Chinese side of the line of actual control in Moldo. The Defence Ministry said the two sides positively appraised the smooth completion of disengagement of frontline troops in the Pangong Lake area. They noted that it is a significant step forward that provided a good basis for resolution of other remaining issues along the LAC in the Western sector. Both the countries had candid and in-depth exchange of views on other issues along the LAC in the Western sector. The two sides agreed to follow the important consensus of their state leaders and continue their communication and dialogue. They also agreed to stabilize and control the situation on the ground and push for a mutually acceptable resolution of the remaining issues in a steady and orderly manner to maintain peace and tranquility in the border areas. External Affairs Minister of India Dr. S. J. Shankar concluded his two-day visit of Maldives on Sunday. In a joint conference with Minister of Foreign Affairs of Maldives and Mali, Dr. J. Shankar asserted that the India-first policy of Maldives is reciprocated in full measure by Prime Minister Modi's neighbourhood-first policy. He said that Maldives enjoys a central position in India's neighbourhood-first policy. It is therefore quite natural that the first and largest recipient of India's COVID support, be it medicines, food, medical response team, or financial packages, was Maldives. It is equally no surprise that Maldives is the first country where Indian-made COVID vaccines landed. And this was just within 96 hours of our own vaccine rollout. I must congratulate you, Minister, on your efficient vaccination drive making, I believe, Maldives the third best in the world in terms of daily doses administered under population. To further assist you in this drive, I have today carried with me another consignment of 100,000 doses of COVID vaccine as India's gift to the government and people of the Maldives. The External Affairs Minister also reiterated India's strong support to a greater role for Maldives in multilateral organizations. By joining the Indian Ocean Regional Association, rejoining the Commonwealth and playing a greater role in the United Nations, Maldives has demonstrated its value in the Committee of Nations. In this context, I reiterate today India's strong support to the candidature of Foreign Minister Abdullah Shahid for President of the 76th Session of the UN General Assembly next year. In Myanmar, Facebook has deleted the military's main page for breaching its standards for prohibiting the incitement of violence. In a statement, Facebook said in line with their global policies, they removed the Tatmadaw True News Information Team page from Facebook for repeated violations of community standards prohibiting incitement of violence and coordinating harm. Meanwhile, police arrested a well-known actor, Liu Min, for opposing the military coup, even as thousands gathered for mass protests in the two biggest cities of Yangon and Mandalay. The charges can carry a two-year prison sentence. The United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, spoke out against the use of deadly violence in Myanmar on Sunday. 
In a tweet early on Sunday, Mr. Guterres said that the use of lethal force, intimidation and harassment against peaceful demonstrators is unacceptable. He added that everyone has a right to peaceful assembly. The UN Secretary General called on all the parties to respect the election results and return to the civilian rule. China has arrested three persons for publishing online comments which were considered false and insulting toward the PLA soldiers who fought in the China-India border clash at Galwan eight months ago. As reported by the Chinese state media, citing a statement by the local police, a 25-year-old person surnamed Yang was sent to seven days of detention in Sichuan's Mianyang area on Sunday for having posted smears toward the PLA soldiers who fought in the China-India border clash. Another 28-year-old person, surnamed Chen, was arrested in Beijing for publishing insulting comments in a group chat about the PLA soldiers who died in the Galban Valley clash. A notice published on the official WeChat account of the Beijing police on Sunday said, the case is undergoing further investigation. A third person, an online blogger, was arrested by police in Nanjing in East China's Jiangsu province. The Government of India has advised the states that are witnessing a spike in daily new COVID-19 cases to focus on strict and comprehensive surveillance as well as stringent containment in selected districts. The Health Ministry said Maharashtra, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, Goa and Chandigarh have weekly positivity rate more than the national average. To contain this spike, the Indian government has written to the states to increase the proportion of RT-PCR tests and subject rapid antigen negative people to mandatory retests by RT-PCR. The states were advised regular monitoring of the mutant strains through testing followed by genome sequencing as well as monitoring of the emerging cluster of cases. In the last four weeks in Kerala, the average weekly cases have fluctuated between a high of 42,000 to a low of 34,800. Similarly, in the last four weeks, the weekly positivity in Kerala has increased from 13 point, has ranged from 13.9% to 8.9%. In Maharashtra, the weekly cases have shown a rising trend and have increased from 18,200 to 21,300, while the weekly positivity has also increased from 4.7% to 8%. Amidst rise in number of cases in Mumbai and Maharashtra, the COVID-19 vaccination drive is gaining momentum in the financial capital. The silver lining amidst the pandemic spread is that on Saturday, Mumbai achieving an astounding 133% of target COVID vaccination in a single day. The city's healthcare and frontline workers received jabs at 28 vaccination centers, which included both government and private hospitals. IIT Bombay's researchers have proved that if appropriate social distancing is not maintained, then the COVID-19 infection may probably double up. And hence, the use of face masks and maintaining social distance are always advised as important scientific guards against COVID-19. More from a Mumbai correspondent. IIT Bombay's researcher Professor Amit Agrawal and Professor Rajneesh Bharatwaj have first time quantified the probability of infection for super spreader. As per their research findings, Super spreader emits infection more than three times as compared to normal persons. The research paper further says that the probability of infection increases by up to 185% if appropriate social distancing is not maintained. Research says the presence of masks drastically reduces the volume of infected air and significantly cuts down the risk of infection to the other person in the room. They also say that Cuffing into elbow and the use of handkerchiefs can reduce the volume of cuff cloud and therefore the chances of dispersion of virus. This research paper will be soon published in a physics of fluid journal published by American Institute of Physics. Jeevan Bhausar, AIR News, Mumbai. Now let's take a look at the coronavirus updates from around the world. Israel has begun easing lockdown restrictions on Sunday. On Saturday, the Israeli government has said a German-developed coronavirus vaccine is 95.8% effective in preventing hospitalizations and deaths. The Israeli health ministry said studies showed that the risk of illness from the virus has dropped 95.8% among people who have had both doses of the BioNTech Pfizer jab. Australia has begun vaccinating its population against the coronavirus on Sunday. Prime Minister Scott Morrison received 
received the coronavirus vaccine in a televised event as the country prepares to start inoculations this week. Vaccinations officially begin on Monday and at least 60,000 doses are expected to be administered next week. Argentina's health minister, Guinea's Gonzalez Garcia, has resigned on Saturday after growing concerns around the COVID-19 vaccination campaign in the country. According to reports, people had been able to use connections to get access to COVID-19 vaccines to which they were not entitled. In his defense, he posted a letter on Twitter saying that individuals were able to sidestep proper procedure for vaccinations due to unintended confusion in his office while he was away. Taiwan said on Sunday that it had confirmed three cases of the COVID-19 variant first discovered in Brazil. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has pledged that every adult in the United Kingdom should be offered a COVID-19 vaccine by the end of July. Resh Matiwari, World News, All India Radio. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Three steps to stay protected and stay safe from COVID-19. Wear face mask, do gaz ki duri to maintain social distancing, maintain hand and face hygiene. Russia has said that its scientists have detected the first case of transmission of the H5N8 strain of the avian flu to humans and alerted the World Health Organization in this regard. In a television interview on Saturday, the head of Russia's health watchdog, Rospotreb Nadzer, Anna Popova said that information about the world's first case of transmission of the avian flu, H5N8, to humans has already been sent to the World Health Organization. Highly contagious strain, H5N8, is lethal for birds, but it has never been reported before to have spread to humans. The Indian mission in Beijing has seen all of its Chinese social media accounts flooded with hate messages since Friday, the day China for the first time announced their Galvan death figures, eight months after the clashes took place. The Indian embassy in Beijing also received few hate phone calls on its office numbers. The announcement that four soldiers were killed and one injured in the deadly Galvan Valley clash last June led to an extreme outpouring of grief, anger and emotions from Chinese netizens and many angry and abusive comments were directed at Indian Embassy's Chinese social media accounts. General negative comments on India Mission's Weibo account are not new, but for the past two days it has seen barrage of angry messages. In the U.S., a Boeing jet scattered debris over a residential area near Denver after one of its engines failed on takeoff. The incident happened on Saturday. The Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, said that a United Airlines plane bound for Honolulu suffered a failure in its right-hand engine. The Boeing 777, with 231 passengers and 10 crew on board, was able to return safely and land at the Denver International Airport. The police department in Broomfield, Colorado, said that no injuries were reported. Passengers on board described a large explosion shortly after takeoff. Images posted online showed smoke bellowing from the engine. Iran is studying a European Union proposal for an informal meeting between the current members of Tehran's 2015 nuclear deal and the United States, but has yet to respond to it. Iranian Deputy Foreign Minister Abbas Erakchi in a televised interview said yesterday that his country was studying Joseph Borrell's proposal to hold an informal meeting of the 4 plus 1 nuclear deal members with the United States and would consult with partner countries including Russia and China and respond to this proposal in the future. Iran and the United States have been at odds over who should take the first step to revive the 2015 accord. Iran insists the United States must first lift former President Donald Trump's sanctions while Washington says Tehran must first return to compliance with the deal. Meanwhile, the, her, the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, Rafael Grossi, arrived in Tehran on Saturday. Mr. Grossi arrives ahead of Iran's plan to partly suspend the agency's inspections of the country's nuclear facilities. Grossi tweeted on Friday that he would try to find a mutually agreeable solution compatible with Iranian law, adding that it was in everybody's interest. President of the United States of America, Joe Biden, on Saturday told the Munich Security Conference that the United States would work closely with the Allies in dealing with Iran after his predecessor, Trump, took an aggressive unilateral approach. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi chaired the sixth meeting of the Niti Aayog Governing Council on Saturday. The meeting emphasized on encouraging private sector involvement for Atmanirbhar Bharat. In today's hotspot section, we're in conversation with Mr. Shekhar Ayer, political analyst and Ruchika Chaturvanshi, journalist on the outcome of the meeting and the way forward. The sixth meeting of the Governing Council of Niti Aayog was held yesterday under the chairmanship of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The Prime Minister has backed private sector role in order to make India a self-reliant nation. Mr. Ayer, can you take us through what were the key takeaways from this meeting and what is the significance of the Governing Council meeting? This was the sixth one we understand. This was the sixth council meeting, as you mentioned. And there were six uh, major thrust areas that were taken up for discussion between the centre and the state, with the centre being represented by the Prime Minister himself. And uh, in attendance were 26 uh, chief ministers, three lieutenant governors, two administrators. And apart from that, there were union ministers who are ex-official members of the Niti Aayog. And you also had participation from several chief secretaries and others. And the discussions were moderated by the Defence Minister Rajinath Singh Ji. Now, if you look at the thrust areas, that gives us an idea of what is the key areas on which the Prime Minister as well as the central government wanted the states to focus on. One is making India a manufacturing powerhouse. The next was to look at the agriculture, which is currently in focus uh, because of the three farm laws. And then the other was, you know, what should be done to improve the physical infrastructure, you know, across the states. Then to look at human resource development and see what can be done to further accelerate this development. And then looking at what kind of uh, steps that are in the process or already being taken to ensure delivery of services at the grassroots level. And lastly, the discussion also focused on health and nutrition. Now, in fact, uh, this uh, meeting we saw from the remarks made by the Prime Minister, which were rather very, very frank and uh, very candid. In fact, the Prime Minister mentioned the fact that, you know, India has a lot of talents, whether it is entrepreneurial talent or whether it is innovative talent, there's a lot of talent. But when it comes to final development of products, we don't seem to be in a position to do what countries like America or Europe or Japan have been able to achieve. So therefore, the Prime Minister drew attention to the fact that a company like Google could have been developed in India had that kind of enabling policy support was there at a time when Google became a big company. So he said the one of the ways we can create a situation where you can have enterprises like Google is to take advantage of this production link scheme. So that is the main thing. And for instance, he mentioned about the fact that geospatial data, which has been recently liberalized, if this could have been done 10 years ago, you know, maybe somebody could have thought of a Google-like enterprise in India. So. Even in Google, what is to be noticed is a lot of the human resource which is working in Google, you know, comes from India. So in terms of talents, Indians are no less in the talent pool, you know, their contribution. But what is needed is that kind of policy initiatives. Of course, the center is announced several policy initiatives, but the states also must also get into that what is called competitive and cooperative federalism. Look at, you know, policy initiatives that are broadly at a national level and see how it can be done at the state level. And even within the state, you know, the Prime Minister suggested, why not look at products that can be developed in a particular district or a district considered with all the factors that help in the development of a, a particular product. So is district a product? Absolutely. It's a very intriguing question that why can't we develop company like Google in India? Do you think that enough steps have been taken and has governing council showed us some way as to how India can boost innovative thinking and then also enable the, you know, the whole journey from ideation to execution? How can states and center, as you mentioned, cooperative federalism come together to make that a reality? Does the governing council talk about that? Indeed, uh, you know, the Developing Council uh, deliberated on several steps, you know, for making India a manufacturing powerhouse. And uh, with the Prime Minister also do attention to the fact, most of the entrepreneurs uh, have a common complaint, which is there is too much of compliance and so much of rules and regulations for, for adhering to those compliances will have to be given. There is so much of paperwork even in a paperless situation. You know, you have to file a lot of compliance regulations. So what the Prime Minister suggested was, why not some reforms? 
Now, just as the center, center did away with more than 1,200 the laws which were considered absolutely obsolete. Similarly, why not the states also undertake, look at this compliance burden. In terms of if you have been cleared a compliance at one level, I mean, there should be a single window kind of thing when it comes to a compliance. So that any entrepreneur who comes with bubbling with enthusiasm and manage to get an investor, he is not stuck in just getting clearances, you know, to start his startup. So that kind of thing should be avoided. And also, we have to improve the logistics in terms of which is center already concentrating on speed up corridors, speed up railway network, uh, you know, better air connectivity, and also keep focus on export. You know, the most important is we'll have to look at the untapped markets. Because we are talking of the crisis in our agriculture. Prime Minister mentioned so we are importing edible oil that is uh, to the tune of 60,000 crore to 65,000 crore. Now, this kind of money we are spending just to import edible oil. Now, could not this be money be transferred to our own farmers if they were more and more into oil seed manufacture? I have a suggestion this was booted. Now, for this, the states will have to do something. But if you look at it, some states are doing more than other states. And some states are refusing to even come into this on the plea that this is going to encourage private sector or there will be domination by some big companies. Because this is the same argument that has been used in the respect of farm sector laws also. So therefore, the Prime Minister mentioned particularly that we will have to see that, you know, the physical infrastructure should also move forward. Of course, several chief ministers come with their suggestions how capital investment can be increased. Because the states always look at, rather they would always prefer that the central government, you know, bear the burden of infrastructure investment because they cite their own source crunch. But from their part also, the state should be willing to show, you know, they are encouraging in infrastructure development and they are also entering into some private-public partnerships, improving last-mile connectivity and then reducing the energy cost. Export is one uh, big area where uh, we are looking to boost the Indian industry. The budget also has announced various steps towards this direction. What is the role of center and state, the whole cooperative federalism, in order to make this a reality, as you said, because a lot of these subjects, as you mentioned, health, etc., they're all concurrent list subjects. Now, take for instance, when you talk of infrastructure projects, one of the biggest hurdles is the land acquisition. Now, we did see during the, the first term of Prime Minister Modi, the land acquisition bill was brought and it created a lot of furor. There was a strident uh, campaign by the opposition parties. And finally, the center decided that the land acquisition bill, which was thought of by the center, will be the model bill. And the states can take it up. They can have their own state laws on the basis of that model, which is to make land acquisition an easy proposition for infrastructure products. I think similarly, there are other areas which the states can, you know, be an active participant. Because obviously, if I'm an investor, I'm going to get confused by central law and then, you know, some state laws being passed, which is supposed to be against it, though the finally the legality of all this will be settled by the apex court, maybe sometime later. But in the meantime, as an investor, I have lost time and maybe I have lost enthusiasm. So therefore, I think the states as well as the central government, must come together on some issues and realize that these are the best for our, for to take things forward so that the development is, takes place at a faster pace. You see, the Prime Minister used to say that if there is a single thing that is the solution for all our problems, whether it is poverty or unemployment or even lack of nutrition or condition of women or child welfare, all this has to do with the pace of development. So we need to agree on what are the things that need to move faster. If it is yes. the legislative process that is delaying it, that must be speeded up. If it is want of infrastructure, that must be done faster. Whether it is accessibility in terms of water or other factors, then those things must be made easy. And state must look at it in terms of a competitive federalism, which is what the Prime Minister often says. In fact, the uh, Prime Minister has made the case for the farm laws by he said that, that farmers need support in terms of economic support, infrastructure and modern technology, which uh, require reforms and reforms are important. One of the important things that he's talked about is the role of private sector and that how important it is for the in the development journey of the country. And he said that we have to honor this enthusiasm and this energy of the private sector and give it as much opportunity. Do you think he's hinting at some of the laws and all that that create problems for the private sector to flourish in India and uh, probably hinting towards 
how the policy should shape going forward especially in a post pandemic scenario today the private sector has lot of talents lot of entrepreneurial talents and they also have exposure to lot of financial resources because the states particularly the governments are you know actually i would say they are restrained by a limit on their resources so that is why this talk of private public partnership is essentially is that because what the public units can do is they can give you land they can give you other things but in terms of entrepreneurial talent in terms of some managerial talent the private sector is more time bound and is more outcome bound compared to state run enterprises which are rather you know caught up in lot of process that's why prime minister keeps saying let us be you know more outcome oriented rather than process oriented and that is his constant advice to the bureaucracy also also to the state governments and every state should also try to emulate the best practices that they notice in other states see the what is our goal that the goal is that we need to take advantage of this post pandemic situation where old ways of doing things no longer work but new ways will have to be thought of very quickly and adapted because we will have to transform we have to innovate and transform then only we will be able to perform and meet our objectives and particularly even if our objective is to create jobs and that was the basic message of this uh, governing council's uh, deliberations thank you so much mr ayer for joining us today and sharing your thoughts thank you very much ruchika in tennis serbian novak djokovic scripted his ninth australian open and 18 grand slam victory on sunday he defeated daniel medvedev 7-5 6-2 6-2 at melbourne park Now let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. The Washington Post reports that former president of the US Donald Trump will speak at Conservative Political Action Conference CPAC in first public appearance since leaving office. Gulf Times reports that the country's Ministry of Public Health reported 459 new confirmed cases of coronavirus on Sunday. The 21st of February is celebrated as the International Mother Language Day. Let us now listen to a composition dedicated to India's multilingual culture. Mile sur mera tumhara to asur bane hamara Ja antarad hai mera antarad ik vat ban ye sa antar A quick look at the headlines once again. Tenth round of commander level talks between India and China concludes. Both sides agree to stabilize the situation and push for early resolution. Government of India asks states with spike in daily new COVID-19 cases to increase testing, surveillance of cases, and containment in select districts. Facebook takes down Myanmar military's main page for breach of standards of incitement to violence. Nuclear watchdog IAEA chief arrives in Tehran as Iran studies proposal for informal meet with USA on the 2015 JCPOA deal. And in tennis, defending champion Novak Djokovic wins his ninth Australian Open title, beating Daniel Medvedev at Melbourne Park. India is celebrating the 151st birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Before we end, let us listen to his favorite bhajan by artists from Morocco. And 
with that, we end this bulletin. See you at same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News. Thank you.